Egan Bernal is having a season far above the expectations that even the most optimistic amongst us could have dreamed of. After suffering a serious injury in the winter of 2022 and after a discreet 2023 season, very few believe that the Colombian rider of Team Ineos could be competitive again. The reality is quite different, as this season he has finished three times in the top ten in three one-week tours at World Tour level, and Dave Brailsford's team is already saying that the rider could go to the Tour de France as the main support of Carlos Rodriguez, recent winner of the Tour of Romandy and fourth-placed rider in the 2023 Grand Boucle. However, we think that Rodriguez is going to have a very difficult time getting close to Tadi Pogacar, the main alien that he will face in that competition. And for that, well, we simply have to think about Eganito's own words in a recent interview. The reggaeton-loving pedalist assures everyone that his power and watt-meter readings are pulverizing his own records. That is, he comments that currently, in 2024, and after his serious injury, he's performing better on his bike than in 2019, the year in which he won the Tour de France, and in 2021, the year in which he swept the Giro d'Italia. It is true that in those two competitions, neither the skier nor the mystical lover of Urska Ziegart nor our beloved Danish Anchovy were in the competition. But it also remains true that Egan Brunel was much better than real monsters like the Welsh alcoholic, the white Kenyan or the lover of Marion Roos in his prime before succumbing to the siren's cry of alcohol and when he came close to winning a hilarious Tour de France. In other words, Eganito 2024, much better than the double Grand Tour winning version of himself, is, at best, capable of being three minutes behind the anchovy in a three-day competition, or more than five minutes behind the mystic of Dracula Gianetti in a one-week tour. Let's analyse Egan Brunel's role in the current peloton, and see if he is the only one to think this way. Egan Bernal, just before his accident, signed a gold-plated contract with the Ineos team, allowing him to earn more than 2.5 million euros per year until the 2026 season. Superstar figures, and even higher than those of his supposed leader in the upcoming competitions, Rodriguez. It's very complicated, and there's a chance that he might leave the British team that destroyed cycling in the last decade, because, as we have indicated, it has ceased to be a leading team in road cycling, especially after the departure of Sir Dave Brailsford to Manchester United. But they do remain the team with the second biggest budget in cycling, but still have results inferior to teams like Lidl Trek, Decathlon AG Deuxer, or Alpecin de Koenig despite the fact that these teams have far less money and fewer possibilities to achieve the best marginal earnings. However, quality riders like Bernal himself, or the Brits Tom Pitcock, or Carlos Rodriguez, have lived up to the expectations generated. They just need to take one step further to stop being in the second tier, and they will reach the level of goodness of teams like Visma Lisa Bike or UAE Team Emirates. But just how close are they to taking that step? In Romandy, Egan Bernal gave an absolute lesson in team cycling, one which destroyed the Spanish loudmouth Juan Ayuso and the monstrous borer of the new Frankenstein creation, Florian Lipovitz. If he couldn't finish higher in the general classification, it was because of Eganito's lamentable ride in the individual time trial. But it's clear that the Colombian will have to recover his level little by little and improve his aerodynamic position to be close to the best in this discipline. However, once the roads got steeper, as we saw in Volta Catalunya, he proved to be the best or at least one of the best climbers, as long as a true alien isn't present. That is to say, Eganito is one of the humans that, on an isolated day or with a little luck on his side, could beat any of the aliens of cycling today but nevertheless he still looks rather distant from them despite the data of his various meters. And this demonstrates that the records of Poggy and Jonas and Mathieu and other space beings are not due simply to improvements in nutrition or bikes and materials or Zone 2 or tailwinds or whatever bullshit the GCN guys tell us when they want to slim down for Operation Bikini. Igan knows very well what he's saying and besides he's not the only one since another cyclist has wanted to give his opinion about these cycling monsters. Romain Bardet is practically the last link to the rapidly disappearing 1990s generation. 
The likes of Fabio Aru were going to take the world by storm. And then after passing through Machin's stable, they retired with strange medical condition. Thibaut Pinot and Tom Dumoulin were affected by the confessions of their doped former teammate Georges Priedler in Operation Adalas, and they never won monuments or grand tours again. Tramadolito Quintana was chosen by David Lepation as a scapegoat to show that the UCI is definitely in favour of the fight against doping. Sonny Colbrelli almost died in full competition after a histrionic and historic season at Bahrain Victorious. And our friend Bardet has decided to lower expectations in the face of what happened and acquire a lower profile, fighting for minor tours and single stages in major competitions. However, thanks to his know-how and after many years of experience, he was able to finish second in the recently age, where Poggy obtained the biggest gap over the second-placed rider in 44 years. The Team DSM rider proved he was the best of the rest, including one of Cycling's aliens, the friend of Dr. Cicchini's son, who would pay a month's salary just to have Justin Bieber sing in his ear like a tender believer. Bardet has always criticised the behaviour of the sport's new stars, claiming they look like robots. He says that cyclists like the Danish anchovy are too focused on their meters and data, instead of leaving room for improvisation. But of course, it's one thing to criticise their behaviour as cyclists, and another to insinuate that their blood is not like that of a simple human. But this was done by our ungainly French pedalist in recent statements after his Liège podium. The two times Tour de France podiumist, who has a high level of education and doesn't find it difficult to express himself, knows perfectly well what he's saying with the following statements. I had my best legs ever in this race, and still it was not enough to be even close to Pogaccia. His best legs ever. The guy who had already been on the podium in Liège on another occasion and made the top 10 on two other occasions. Someone who has seen in the race real monsters like P.T. Valverde, doped in Operation Puerto, or Bad Blood Fusang, the Danish rider, always the Danes, related to Michele Ferrari, a rider who had a TUE so that he could dope like a real troll from the caves. Well, these real freaks are trifles in comparison to the current ones, according to Bardet's words, and according to Bernal and his watt meters and performance data. We're talking about two candidates to fight for places of honour, the Colombian in the Tour de France and the Frenchman in the Giro d'Italia. Two men who only three years ago were at the top of world cycling, and yet have suddenly been swept away by six aliens who have changed the sport forever. And as you can see, they're doing it 100% clean.